Adding Logic Remote to your workflow, let's get to work. Jimmy, Jimmy, make, Jimmy, music, make music, 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 music. One of the things that I wanted to touch on is how to incorporate Logic Remote into your Logic Pro X workflow. It's not really talked about that much in my inner circle, so I'm hoping to pass a little bit of information on to you guys. If you don't know what Logic Remote is, it's essentially a MIDI controller for your workflow working with Logic Pro X. And it's a lot more than just extending your desktop view onto the iPad. You can use a keyboard on it, you can add plugins, control all your channels, and it provides a little bit more functionality to the instrument plugins that you already have in your software. So let me give you just a basic overview of what it does and what it looks like. So on your computer, you're gonna open up Logic, you're gonna start a new project, and you're really gonna be using this mainly as a software instrument or an extension to mix your project with. So I'm just gonna open up a software instrument here. Now you can control what instrument you're using from your desktop or from the Logic Pro remote. Once you open the app, it's gonna to connect to your computer over Wi-Fi. So make sure both your computer and your iPad are connected to the same Wi-Fi system. And here's some just basic functionality of it. I'm gonna make a simple instrumental and kind of show you how you would start to build a song using the remote as your controller. Now I can pick an instrument from the desktop or from the remote. Let's just start with some drums inside the sampler plugin. Now once I have that plugin picked, I can go into the remote app. It'll give you a couple of choices of how you want to interact with that plugin. For this case, and in most cases, for me anyway, I would use the smart controls and keyboard because it basically turns your iPad into a piano. And you can change the scale of it. You can add more keys, less keys. I like to say right in the middle. It functions basically like a keyboard would, like you would connect a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard to your computer. And you can change the scale, basically sliding the keys up and down. So let's quickly lay something down. It's just gonna record as a MIDI track. And you can start recording from the remote app or from the desktop. Good enough for me. Now we can play this back inside of Logic on the desktop. Good to go. Now let's add another instrument. I can either do that inside remote or on the desktop. In this case, I'll use remote. Along the top of the screen, there's a whole bunch of different options of what type of view you want to see. So in this case, I want a new instrument. So I would actually go into this cog wheel here. I'm gonna add a new track, software instrument track. And now I'm set on that software instrument track inside of Logic too, on the desktop. So let's add maybe some piano. Maybe that one. Now laying this track down, I don't necessarily want to use the keyboard. Let's see what other options they have for me to make music with. So I like using the chord strips section a lot because it helps you get your chord progression down quicker. Let me show you what I mean. Let me lay down a piano real quick. It sits a little funny, so I want to go down and quantize it real quick. And now you can keep doing this all the way through your track, just keep adding more and more MIDI tracks. Um, another good thing about it is that when you are recording by yourself and you want to record vocals, you can take the Logic Remote app, whether it's on your iPad or even on your phone, bring it to where your microphone is. If you can't find your spot nice and close to where your record button or your mouse is, take it to where your microphone is and you can actually start to record the track from wherever your microphone is and not necessarily where your mouse is on your computer. I'm just gonna add a bass to this real quick and then I'll show you some mixing options.
one of the good things about remote is that you can actually use it to control your mixing board. So as you can see here, So now I can have the mixing console on my iPad while my session's open and not take up too much real estate on the screen. When you open up the mixing section of the remote app, it'll default to the pan and volume. Um, but you can also slide through your different options for each track. On the right hand side here, you'll have your MIDI effects, uh, what is on and off, um, where what input, if you want to change your input, you can do it right here your different audio effects if you wanted to change the EQ or you want to add some reverb or a limiter just like you would on the desktop version. So in this case I'm in my drum, say I want to add some uh, compression. I can add it there. I want to solo that. If you have your plugin selected inside of this audio effects uh, chain, you can actually go into that plugin by opening up plugin and you can change the parameters inside of that. If you want to change your threshold or the ratio or anything you'd like to put into your compression. You can even control your buses or maybe you just want to use the volume controls. That's mainly what I use it for. I like to fine tune everything while I'm on the desktop. Um, and not so much on the iPad. I don't know, maybe I'm just not that fluent with it yet. Another good thing I like about it, as you can see, I'm just using my hands. I don't need a stylus, I don't need an Apple Pencil, nothing fancy, and I can control everything on the screen. Changing levels, and there, it's a decent throw, you know what I mean? It's not very small at all. There are so many things that you can do inside this app, there's no way I can cover it all. It'd basically be me telling you how lot it's like having Logic Pro on your iPad. I mean, it's used as an extension, but you basically have full functionality of the whole program on your iPad. One thing to keep in mind too, when you're done with your project to save it, you'll actually have to do it through the desktop. It'll prompt you to do it there. And even exporting or bouncing, you would wanna do through the desktop app. From what I can see anyway, I, I could be wrong. There's so much going inside the Logic Remote app that it'd be easy to miss something. Again, so I encourage you to use Logic Remote as an extension to Logic Pro on your desktop. Uh, it, it just can add so much more to your creativity with all the different types of ways you can manipulate the sounds with your hands. It's also great to start recordings away from your computer if your microphone's set up somewhere else. And I really like engaging with all the levers and, and knobs on the mixing console. It's a great additive to my workflow. I'm sure it will be to yours. If you have a lot of experience with Logic Remote, I encourage you to comment on this video and let people know how you use it and how you add it to your workflow. Until the next one, guys. Peace. Jimmy, Jimmy, make music, make music, 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 music.